Hi YouTube, my name is Heather and I love anti-MLM content here on YouTube. Today we're going to watch another video from famous MLM trainer, Fraser Brooks, and he's going to tell us about which MLM company is the best to build. So we're going to get started and I'd love to hear what you think below. All right, so Natalie Marie has asked, how do you know that the company you're with is the right one? I keep having doubts. Love, love, love this question. It is so important and it's so fundamental. I'm going to share with you the company that has the absolute best compensation plan right now. Some of you guys are going to be like, what's he doing? But I'm going to tell you. So you might have heard, if your company has got this, right? You know when you're showing the compensation plan and you draw a big circle at the, at the bottom of it, right? That, that's it. Now, it also has... Two, two, two legs, kind of, and it, it's, it's, about, it's about this. I'm sorry, it has, there we go. This is the best compensation plan out there, okay? Now, it has one main part, two arms, and two legs. You are the best compensation plan. You are the best company. Your network marketing business is going to be dependent on what you do. That right there is you. If you want to put a little wig on it, then woo, yeah, there we go. Put a little wig on it. Put a little, a little haircut on it. You're the best. So here's the thing. If your company is... So I agree with him and I don't agree in the same, in the same sense. So he's telling this person who said, I'm kind of doubting my company. How do I know I'm in the right place? And he's saying... You're in the right company because you're in the company and it's based, your success is based on what you do with the compensation plan and the products. So I agree in the sense that all MLMs are the same in the sense that the only way to get to the top of the pyramid is through recruiting. The only way to rank up is through recruitment. Every single MLM is like that. Even the ones that say you don't need a team to make money. That's not true. You need a team to advance. You need a team to make a reasonable living wage. Okay. But I think while all MLMs are the same, different MLMs have more marketable, affordable products. So say Color Street, they have those little nail, wrap, nail wraps for a pretty reasonable price. That's going to be easier to sell than, say, Monat, that's like $100 shampoo. Monat likes to say, oh, well, everyone's already washing their hair. You're just getting people to replace their drugstore shampoo with Monat. And in my opinion, a hundred dollar shampoo and conditioner is harder to market than like $12 nail wraps, or let's say like $5 jewelry from paparazzi. We all know paparazzi jewelry is very, very low quality, but it's more affordable, obviously. And while every, every company is based on recruitment, every company's ranks are structured slightly differently. The example I know most about would be Beachbody. Their focus is more on the number of people you have on your team and the number of, and what rank they're at, and not necessarily a certain amount of total team volume. We know that you do have to, to cycle, you need to have 200 points on one side, 100 points on another, and then you get a certain percentage every time your direct sponsor cycle. But in other, in other companies, the focus is is, is on the number of distributors, but it's also on the volume of your entire downline. So we know volume, it's either when you sell to, sell to customers or when you purchase. Most of the time, it's when people purchase. So we've seen videos from Jessica Hickson when she talks about it, work, it works rankings. And to get from one ranking to another, it's like double in volume in some cases. And in Monat too, to get to the second highest rank to the highest rank, the volume difference is massive. And so in those companies, there is a focus on recruitment, of course, but there's a major focus on volume. And in Monat, they, I think for a senior executive director, you only need to have eight market partners beneath you but the volume requirement is massive and impossible for only eight people to meet that requirement so they're like inadvertently encouraging you to recruit like thousands and thousands of people into your downline so you can meet that personal volume requirement so let me sum that up i know that was a lot of rambling but every company their rank advancements are structured slightly differently and you have to do slightly different things to rank up and move up the ranks some 
products. Some companies are going to have slightly more marketable products. They're going to be lower quality, but they're going to be more affordable and they're going to be easier to sell. Less people are going to want a hundred dollar shampoo. That's just how it goes. Less people are going to want overpriced Mary Kay makeup than someone wanting to purchase really cheap paparazzi jewelry. I know that was a lot in like two seconds, but let me know what you think about that below and let me know if you think I missed anything. Here's some checklists for you. If your company pays on time, stick with it. If your company produces good, good quality products and they get delivered to you on time, if they're a day or two late, fair enough, then great, stick with it. If there are people in the... Most MLM products are not high quality and they are very, very overpriced, except for the exception of like paparazzi or color street maybe because you have to compensate everyone in the upline all the way up to the top of the pyramid so it needs to be a price that's such that the company can get a profit and that you can pay everyone above you and yourself because you do get some commission on your sales the company that are doing uh, to a better than you and they're a position where you want to get to great stick with it and if the company so that that point was if there's people above you who are doing better than you then you need to stick with it but just because just because there are people who are doing really well in mlm doesn't mean that you're going to achieve that level of success most likely you're going to lose money or make no money and we know the idea of like i can do it so you can do it too is a false idea it's like saying if i can learn two by in a week you can learn how to play the tuba in a week we're all different and we're all different skills personality traits and life experiences and that's going to make it easier for one person to advance quickly in rank than others and you have to be okay with the knowledge that if you're at the very top of beach body for example and you're making a million dollars a year you probably know that the people at the bottom of your downline are losing money every single month so you can so you can maintain your million dollar salary and i could imagine it would be hard to have that knowledge that your downline is losing money and still encouraging them to fill their personal volume requirements and continue to reach out to strangers or their loved ones on the internet to get them to join their team or buy a product it is run by you know, people who are building it for a legacy company and you want to create um, residual income, great, run with it. Only those at the top of the pyramid can get actual residual income where you don't have to actually actively build your business. And in the Beachbody context, you're just collecting your matching bonuses and your team cycle bonus off of your downline of like 40,000 people. So residual income is not a reality for those in the middle and the bottom of the pyramid. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Now, I know you might be having doubts, but the doubts shouldn't be in the company. The doubts should be in yourself. The doubts should be in like, hey, am I actually doing enough? Right? Over, I, I spoke to 20 people and no one joined. That's not the company's fault. That's not the company's fault. Right? That's a problem that you have to... It's technically, he's right, it's technically not like the president or the vice president's fault, but if they're just crappy products, people aren't going to want to buy it because... 99% of the time with MLM companies, you can find cheaper products and higher quality products elsewhere. So a lot of people don't want to buy these MLM products because they see like $40 for some eyeliner and they can go to Walmart and get the like eyeliner of the same quality for like half the price. Address and you have to fix so that it doesn't keep happening. In order for you to grow, You've got to find your flow. You need to raise your activity and your, your skills to get the results. You've got to increase your mindset and your skill set to increase your jet set. It doesn't. MLM is full of these useless plat empty platitudes that don't actually have any meaning, meaning, but they're just like fancy buzzwords that draw on people's emotions and get people excited. It doesn't matter if they've got two legs, three legs, two arms, one leg. It matters that it's understand that it's you. I've seen, my, I've seen my parents, I've seen other people in the industry, I've seen thousands of people go from company to company to company to company to company to company to company. And you know the ones that are successful for them? It's the one that they put the focus, time, and energy into. Yes, there are a lot of companies that disguise themselves as network marketing. You've got to be careful with them, right? But if the company is based around good quality products that people would use and buy, whether they were getting paid and whether there was a, whether there was a financial attachment, then you stick with it. So there's two points there. One is MLM hopping, and the other one, if the products are actually high quality, then you should stick with it. So first, MLM hopping. We've all seen stories on YouTube where people go from MLM to MLM because they're thinking, well, it's my fault that I'm not succeeding, so I need to go find a different company 
whether it's like in the beauty industry or the health and wellness industry, people just go from MLM to MLM. And I've seen stories on YouTube where people spend like 12 years in the MLM industry. And then eventually they'll see, okay, it's not my fault. It's the structure. It's the system that's set up for me to fail. And that's why I keep losing money. I find that very sad. People are stuck in this endless cycle of doubting themselves and saying, I think I'm putting in the work. I think I'm doing what my deadline's telling me to do, but like I'm not seeing the results that they say I should be seeing. Second, if your company has high quality products, you should stick with it. MLM products are not high quality. MLM products are MLM products because if you were in the store, no one would buy them. They like to say, MLM distributors like to say, oh, these products will sell themselves. No, they won't because if they could, they would be in the stores. Make the decision to stick with it. The number of people have come to me and said, Fraser, I'm thinking about moving company. And I've said to them, don't give it your all. Give it as much as you've got as if your life dependent depends on it. And then if it doesn't work out, then you know what? Maybe have a look around. Go have a shop around. Not everyone buys one home and stays there for the rest of their life. Right? Maybe you're needing an extra bedroom. Maybe you need a back garden. Maybe you want to downsize. Maybe whatever it might be. But whatever you do, make sure you give it absolute. Gee, I don't mind that analogy. I think it's a very reasonable thing. Like he's pretty much saying people change and people need different things at different times. And so if you like try your best and it's still not working, then feel free to look around. But again, you could try your best and it's not going to work for you because that's how the system was made. And you could try 14 different companies and none of them are going to work. Absolutely everything you've got in order for you to succeed because if you don't, you'll fail no matter where you go. Something else that I see in anti-MLM YouTube content all the time is the idea of the sunk time fallacy. So I already put so much time and money into this MLM, so why would I quit and waste all that time? And because of that, MLM distributors keep paying into like their monthly, in the Beachbody context, monthly coach fees, personal volume requirements, and they just keep losing more and more money. But losing that money is what keeps them in the MLM because they're saying, I lost all this money, I need to keep going from because of the off chance that I could make some of it back. So people are just stuck in this endless cycle. And eventually people, when they're ready, they might come across a YouTube, a YouTube channel like Deanna Mims, who provides like very factual information and she sources everything. And she comes from a very compassionate standpoint, trying to educate people. And once people see that kind of information, they might start to question the system. They might start to question what their downline says, how the vice president or the CEO of their company treats its distributors. And they might start to see how the system is corrupt and how the system is fraudulent and how it's set up for them to fail. And you don't want to be known for the person who's done 17, 18 different companies. All right. So that's how I help you out. Again, if you're struggling, Get a copy of a book. It's called I Dare You. It's the ultimate guide. Another expense for MLM distributors who aren't making any money. So it's like all these conventions and all these personal development books and then his book. It's about the network marketing business using social media. You can go to fraserbrooks.com forward slash book and you'll be able to get yourself a copy of this awesome book because maybe it's just a skill set thing. But right now, you're also struggling with a mindset thing because you're having doubts. And the more you think, the more you doubt, the more you doubt, the less you do, the less you do, the more you think, the more you think, the more you doubt, the more you doubt, let's do, let's do, the more you think, the more you think, the more you doubt, the more you doubt, let's do, let's do, the more you think, the more you think. It's a vicious cycle. You need to think. I'm just going to blab for a few more seconds. So I'm just going to stop it here. Do you remember, I think the last video I did of him or two videos ago, I did of him. He's saying like, Thinking, overthinking is bad. You got to stop thinking and then you'll stop doubting and then you'll do more. In this case, he doesn't want you to think because if you think about why you want to move MLMs, you might see like, oh, my upline's really toxic. They're bullying me to buy all this product to help them rank up. Oh, I'm not making any money. I'm losing money every single month. Um, oh, is this because of the system? Or is it my fault? Like you said, do I not have the skills to succeed? Do I not, do I not have the mindset to succeed? And then if they actually think about it and analyze the data, they might see that it's not their fault and that the system was constructed so at least 80% of people at the bottom of the pyramid lose money. So the at, at minimum 20% at the top make lots of money. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear what you think about everything below. Thank you.